On today's menu, we're going to be making another type of Belizean bread. It's called yeast cakes. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. To make this yeast cake, we're going to start off with all-purpose flour. And I've measured out nine cups in this big bowl. We're going to use evaporated milk this time, not coconut milk. I have a quarter cup of sugar, a third cup of butter, and I have this bowl right here because I'm going to put the yeast in it. We're going to use like two packs, and this is the, let me turn it this way, this is the active dry yeast, and if you don't have it in the package like this because you buy it by the pound, like in bulk, you're going to need two tablespoons, and it's measuring tablespoons, okay? And I know a lot of Belize people ask me, is it measuring stuff or is it the stuff that you eat with? But it's measuring spoons and measuring cups that I'm using. So I'm going to open these two packages of yeast in one cup of warm water from this um, kitchen faucet. And I'm going to put the two packs of yeast in there. And I'm going to add one teaspoon of sugar to it because for majority of my breads, this is what I do for the yeast. A cup of warm water, two tablespoons or two packages of the yeast and one teaspoon of the sugar. So let's get that started. I put one pack in already, or one tablespoon if you're using a tablespoon. That's the second pack. And then just kind of put the sugar there and don't touch it. And leave it there for about 15 minutes to let it rise. And then in the meantime, if you haven't measured out your other ingredients yet, you see I've already measured out my ingredients. If you haven't measured it out yet, that's when you would go ahead and measure your ingredients. But in the meantime, we need 15 minutes to let the yeast rise. Look at the yeast, guys. It's been about 12 minutes and it's raise, rising pretty good because the yeast is fresh. And I'll show you guys um, how to store your yeast if you buy it by the pound so that it doesn't go bad on you, okay? So if you buy the yeast by the pound, you don't want to put it in plastic, okay? This is glass. You always want to put it in glass, see how it, it's still fresh? And it's not wet or clumpy or like that. If you put it in plastic, for some reason, the lid will sweat back into the yeast and it'll get wet and it'll go bad. So this has been here at least eight months in this jar. But I used a pack because I wanted to um, be done quick. Because sometimes when it sits there for too long, it kind of gets a little bit slower. Not, I, I guess it gets stale, but it, it doesn't go bad, but it gets a little bit stale. So I didn't want to take a chance on this today. I wanted to quickly get this menu out of the way. So that's why I used the, the package of yeast. But this is how you store it in a glass jar. So as you remember, this is nine cups of all-purpose flour only a quarter cup of sugar, it's not too much sugar. And I'm gonna do this one third cup of the butter. I'll just take it out with my hand right here because my hand's gonna get in there right now anyways. We're gonna put our yeast. This is our first liquid that we wanna put in. Start working it around. And if you notice the butter was at room temperature, you don't want it um, hard and cold like if you're doing a biscuit, okay? You want it to be at room temperature and then remember, it's evaporated milk. It's not going to be um, coconut milk. And I could have heated up this milk too in the microwave, but you know, you have the option to either or. And I haven't told you guys yet, I believe that this bread is actually going to be so quick because we're only going to knead it once. It's not going to be kneaded twice like when we make the Creole bread or the yeast bread. And this is called yeast cakes. And one of my family members taught this to my mom so many years ago. She was a little Indian lady. So I don't know if it's more towards that culture, but we certainly make this quite often. Joe doesn't like it too much because of the fact that it's only needed once. It is kind of a stiffer bread, not quite like a French bread, but it is a stiffer bread. So he doesn't like it so much. So I make it, you know, very infrequently, but it can go well for dinner rolls and burger breads and stuff like that, or, or as they say here in America, bur burger buns. So I'm adding warm water as needed. In the book, I have five ounces. If you need more, by all means, do more. Don't stick so stagnant to what I do in the book because I tried really hard to get these recipes concise. So watch what we're doing. Just adding water a little bit at a time. Now we don't want to add it too plentiful because we don't want this dough to get too soft. But as you can see, it's going to definitely need more liquid. So we're going to add some more. And um, I don't want to turn the camera off because I want you guys to see 
when working with dough, you know, how to um, gauge when you're like right at the point of having enough liquid. So this is still dry, if you can see. I don't know if my camera, I have Jory running the camera today, if he can zoom in to see how it's not too wet. And I only have a little bit of water left. We might need more. And I started off, I believe that was about four ounces that was in that cup. So I'm gonna go measure another two. And then we're gonna add it sparingly. So give me one moment. So let me go measure some more water. So here's another two ounces of water. We want a little bit at a time now, okay? For people who are just making breads for the first time, that's the mistake that most people make they add the liquid too quickly and um, then the bread, the dough gets too soft. Then you have to go back and add more flour to make it workable and then pretty soon your bread is stiff and hard and doesn't have any taste. So that's why I'm going so slowly with this now. We're getting to that point where it's getting more wet than dry. And so this is where you want to like put your elbow grease in and get this dough kneaded up. I'm not sure we're going to need more water. I want to take my ring off and get in there with both hands and see how it's feeling, okay? So let me get that off. Yeah, this is feeling kind of moist. If I need any more water, it's just like to get this dry parts together on this. So, and this feels a lot stiffer than when we're doing the Creole breads. So let's get this worked in. So you guys know why I stopped making bread and bun for sale, right? because this is work. But it's not work when you're doing it for your family, you know, like if you're doing it as a labor of love. But when I was doing it as a business, I was doing like 60 pounds of buns on Thursday and 50 pounds of breads on Wednesday, Creole bread. And so it was a lot, a lot of hard work. I, have, I would need like five pounds at a time. This recipe that we have right here is only about two and a half pounds, but we're gonna get a lot of dinner sized rolls out of this. So let me get it to the counter now and show you what we do next. So I've been kneading this for a good two to three minutes right here. And this is all you want to do with the big old mass. Remember, we're not going to set it so that it can um, rise for an hour and then punch it down and then let it rise again. We're going to actually start, see how smooth it's becoming? We're actually going to start cutting these into the sizes that we want and then set it on a greased baking sheet or cookie sheet to let it rise for one hour only. So we have our dough, and what I'm doing is just cutting it down the middle because it's so fat, right? We want little rolls, kind of like when we did the Johnny Cakes. And we start off the first one. We're going to get a lot. So I want to show you, this is a small one, or a regular size, I should say. And all I'm doing is kneading the bottom so you can get smooth, and then you kind of pinch it all together. And um, roll out the bottom like that just to make it as smooth as you can go. So this is what I call a regular size one, like if you were doing it for breakfast and stuff, right? And you put it there. Now let's say you're gonna to go to a potluck and you wanna take them with you. You can always go smaller on the regular size one. So let me do these two so you can know that this is one regular size one that I actually cut in two, because I wanna show you how big it's gonna to, to swell to after we let it rise. And you could probably take it to like a potluck you know, so you can have a lot and the kids and so on could just grab a little one and nobody's eating like a huge loaf of bread. So this is two mini ones. And especially if you're watching your weight and you want to eat some bread, you can always get away with these two little mini ones. Now let me show you a bigger size one that you would actually do if you wanted to make it for hamburgers. See, that's pretty big. And so let me go ahead and get this one kneaded up. Isn't it so awful every time I'm trying to do a show, that's right when somebody will call and you'll hear my cell phone going off. So kind of had to pause there for a minute, but look how big this one is. Nice and beautiful. And we're gonna make this as flat as we can go. We don't wanna make it flat as a tortilla, but we don't want it to swell too fat. We want it to swell more wide. So if you want, you can also use a rolling pin to just make this a little bit flatter. And see, this is already looking like the size of a burger bread, but it'll get a little bit bigger. And this is what I do sometimes when I'm doing hamburgers, homemade hamburgers. I'll make my own bread from scratch and boy, does everybody love this. So, and this bread will go good. It goes better when it's, um, you eat it right after it's done cooking, when it's warm, okay? So let me get the rest of these 
knead it up into the regular sizes like this one and fill my two baking trays here and then we're going to set it aside to let it rise for one hour. I'll show you when I have the trays full. I got two of these baking sheets full with the loaves and there's 12 on each sheet. See? And then this little sheet right here in the back, there's only three loaves on it, but the reason I put it in this little cake pan right here is because I don't want to dirty one of my big sheets like this just for three little loaves. So I'm going to take a clean dishcloth that I use only for baking. I don't usually use my dishcloths um, to wipe the dishes that, see, this one's getting icky. I don't usually use that to cover my bread. I use clean, fresh ones that I use only for that purpose. And I'm just going to cover it up right here on the counter. And then within one hour, I'm going to check back on them and then we're going to get it ready for the oven and it's going to be 350 degrees Fahrenheit for a, a very short time. I'm going to tell you the time when I um, come back and get it ready for the oven. In the meanwhile, this is only going to sit here. This one is probably going to rise before this one because these were made first, right, as I was going along. But we'll wait for both of them to be ready and then we'll stick them in the oven and then we're going to have these beautiful yeast cakes. It's been about 40 minutes since I set the bread to let it rise. Let's take a look. See that one big hamburger one that I made? It's nice, huh? So at this point, I'm going to set the oven so it can preheat on 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's going to take another, what, six to ten minutes to preheat. So we could turn it on now because these are all swollen and beautiful. Let's go take a look at the one here in the little cake pan. See? They're nice. Spongy. So we're going to go ahead and get this in the oven after it's preheated. And then I'll tell you guys how long it took to cook, all right? So I'm just standing here waiting for the oven to preheat so I can put the breads in. And I can't wait for them to be done because I love eating it when it's hot. And also, I want to eat it for my dinner today with some type of fried fish or something. So as soon as it's ready, when we hear the little beeps, I'm going to go ahead and put them in, okay? Remember last couple of shows, I told you guys that I'm going to try to throw some Belizean words or phrases or proverbs um, on the show so I can share the culture with you? Well, today's phrase or proverb goes like this in Creole. Rock da rivabatam no no son hat. And what that means in English is the rock that's at the bottom of the river doesn't know that the sun is hot. And it's a proverb, so what it actually means is you don't miss what you haven't experienced. I wanted to also let you guys know that I finally convinced my sister. You know, I'm always trying to convince everybody around me, my neighbor across the street, my sister, my daughter, my kids, do your own YouTube channel. It's fun and your lives are interesting enough that you can make, uh, you can get a lot of content off of it. And so I finally convinced my sister Tracy to start her own YouTube channel. I even went down there, did a little snippet of a show that she's gonna put up next week. She was making rice and beans and Joe and I stopped by so we could show her how to do it and to get her show off the ground. She already did her little intro and her channel is called My Life on the Hill. And I'll try to post some kind of graphic in here so you can see. But if you guys can go take a look at her channel and give her some type of comment to keep her motivated because it, you know, it's, it's new to her Editing, editing the shows are hard and everything's pretty new. She's got enough content. That part she's got down pat because her personality is definitely different than mine. But she lives next door to our parents. So that alone is a reality TV. So I wish you guys would go take a look at her show and subscribe if you want to and share it with your friends and family and let's keep her motivated so she doesn't stop doing it, okay? Thanks a lot. Here we have the finished product. I got a total of 27 of the little breads, little loaf of breads. And these are like anywhere from medium to large sizes. Sometimes when I get bigger is because I'm getting tired of rolling them off. Look at the big one that I told you that I was making for us to do hamburgers, right? I could have even flattened it a little bit more and then it would have been flatter and wider, but this will make a good hamburger bread. And it's kind of warm still. Look at these little ones. I call these poppers because you could just two bites and these are popped in your mouth and these are good to take to um, potlucks and repast and anything where you don't want people to have like have to cut bread and do all this just grab them and they're to go so let me get one cut open and put some butter so you guys can see what it looks like 
And like I said, these are going to be stiff by tomorrow morning, but not stiff like French bread, just not as soft as Creole breads. And so what you want to do tomorrow is put it in the toaster. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And you can do that too. You could put a little bit of butter dab down the top to make it not look white like that with the flour. And you want to put it in the toaster and toast it again, lightly toast it, and it'll come back just like it just came out of the oven. So you see how the butter melts in it because it's still hot? And you know I've been waiting for over an hour. Oh, by the way, it took 35 minutes to bake this whole lot, okay? And I'm baking the other three separately because it just simply could not fit in the oven with all of this that I had going on. I know that by now you guys are probably old pros at making bread, right? And see how simple this one was? I didn't even have to knead it twice, only once. I make this bread a lot when we're doing barbecues or if I'm going to potlucks or if I'm going to a repast because it's quite a bit that I get out of the nine cups. Or I like to do it also when I have house guests from out of town. As they sleep, I would get up pretty early in the morning and like five or 5.30, I already have it kneaded off and, and setting it there to let it rise. And within an hour, I would get it baked. And when they're waking up, they wake up to fresh, hot, warm bread with their breakfast. And that's the kind of stuff that I like to do with it. Also, you can make this like if you're preparing for like a hurricane or something and you want to have like powder buns and johnny cakes and so on. This is one of the breads too that will go really, really well when you're weathering out the storm and stuff. I eat this with ham and cheese. We do it with hamburgers, like I told you. We do it with plain old breakfast. Sometimes I'll eat it just by itself, sometimes with butter, sometimes with jams or jellies, peanut butter, any type of cheeses. It goes really, really well with everything, kind of like the Johnny Cake. It's very versatile. I hope you guys make it and tell me how yours come out, okay? And by the way, thank you guys for subscribing, for watching, for sharing the channel with your friends and family, for commenting. I, I look forward to your comments so that I can respond. And I don't ever get you know, tired of people you know, telling me, well, I did this for my mom, I did this for my dad, they loved it. Oh, that feels so awesome because that's why I created the channel to share a little bit of the Belizean culture. Because if you guys are Belizeans, you know that the Belizean people on a whole, they don't like to share their recipes. And I kind of had to like peek around corners and stuff to get some of these recipes. But I love, love, love sharing it. And I love your comments. And especially if you ask a question, well, how much to use for this? And what do I do if this happens? I like that kind of stuff too. That's why I ask you to follow me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter so you can have more direct contact with me than waiting for me to like look for the email from YouTube and so on and so on. So thank you guys so much for the support. You know, there was um, somebody who bought three of my books recently from, I think it's from Texas. And that was such a blessing, you know, not one book, but three books. That was awesome. Thank you so much. I receive all your love and your support. Until I see you guys again, take care.